Good morning. Welcome to St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Massillon, Ohio, online. A few announcements before we begin. Uh, first of all, we'll be using uh, Rite 2 for Holy Eucharist, um, which you can find in the Book of Common Prayer. 
We'll also be using Andrew Bolden's Third Street Mass, which you can find at our website, which is stjimsmassillon.com. Uh, so, a few announcements. Uh, with the influx of COVID cases in Ohio, the bishop has ordered all churches to suspend in-person services until further notice. Consequently, we will have no in-person services for the near future. Our streaming schedule will change in the coming weeks, but this Wednesday, this Wednesday evening, we will stream a service of Lessons and Carols at seven o'clock Wednesday evening. Uh, it will be on our Facebook page and on our YouTube, YouTube page live stream. I'm not sure if I can figure out how to get it on the website because it's a lot of pre-recorded stuff. So we'll see, but I will send out an email on Wednesday with all the appropriate links and uh, a program to follow along and all of that sort of stuff. So it's Wednesday, seven o'clock. Now, starting tomorrow, all of these poinsettias will be looking for a home specifically your home. <laughs> if you would like one or as many as you can carry, please come in this week and pick them up. We have 50 plus 58. 50 plus eight is 58. <laughs> we have 58 of them. Uh, please do call the office ahead of time to make sure someone will be here. Uh, and please wear a mask and uh, appropriate COVID protocols when you do come. But please come and get them. They are free and looking for a home. Uh, we will hold our annual meeting January 17th at 11.30, right after the Sunday service. We're going to use Zoom for that. Uh, we hope you will join us. Uh, there's not a lot of business to decide, but we do have to elect three new vestry members and vote on the annual budget. Uh, if you wish to attend, you'll have to download the Zoom program if you don't already have that. Um, and there was a link in last week's email. There will be one again in this week's email. Uh, so I hope you can join us. That's January 17th at 1130. Thank you to everyone who's been able to continue to contribute to the church during these challenging days, months. Uh, if you've not yet picked up offering envelopes for 2021, please take one when you come to get a poinsettia. Uh, they are not numbered this year, and we will blame that on COVID just like everything else. So uh, offering envelopes are available, poinsettias are uh, available. Please do come and get them. Now, birthdays. This week, we have a lot of birthdays. Uh, today, Kathy Rippick and Jim Job is their birthday. And then later in the week, we have Jason Smith, Katie Miller, Doreen Pennington, Evan Smith, and Brian Fichter. So, in your prayer book, if you will turn to page 830, we use prayer 51 here at St. Timothy's Church. Page 830, prayer 51. Let's pray together for Kathy, Jim, Jason, Katie, Doreen, Evan, and Brian. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of their life through jesus christ our lord amen happy birthday to all of you uh one last thing um last sunday our um, friend and parishioner pete keplinger passed away uh, for those who've been around this parish for a while you know that pete was a pillar of the community not only here in this congregation but also in stark county uh, he will be laid to rest tomorrow in a private ceremony um, in the afternoon. And I ask that you please keep Connie and Helen and Elizabeth and their family in your prayers and in your thoughts. Our service begins uh, by singing hymn number 102, Once in Royal David City. Uh, we're only going to sing verses 1 and 2, 4 and 6. So basically that means skip the ones with an asterisk next to them. So hymn number 102, verses 1 and 2, 4 and 6.
service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For our hymn of praise, we sing the first verse of hymn number 96. The first verse of hymn number 96, the words are different than you think. <laughs> Continue with the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud in the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We sing together hymn number 81. Hymn number 81.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So here we are on the 10th day of Christmas. I hope you're enjoying your 10 lords a leaping. It's getting a little loud at this point. The Christmas season is almost over. We've entered a new year and Epiphany starts on Wednesday. Things are changing quickly, whether we're ready or not. Accepting change is very hard. The most recent example for you and me right now is probably the appearance of the number one, since I'm sure I'm not the only one who has already had to cross out 2020 and write 2021 on something. We often say that change is good and that we embrace change and change is for the better and all of that. But when it comes right down to it, change is hard especially hard when we don't want things to change. Still, change keeps coming. But first things first, to change the subject, the question we are all honestly asking ourselves right now is, three days? They were searching for Jesus for three days? I have often lost track of my kids for three minutes and I'm sun settings for three hours, but three days. And when they find him, Mary says to Jesus, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Well, there's an understatement, huh? Great anxiety doesn't begin to describe it, I'm sure. On the other hand, Part of me expects Jesus to say, well, you're the ones who lost me. And of course, that's why he's Jesus and I'm not. And the next question is, how did this happen anyway? How do you just leave your eldest child and not even notice for a whole day? In fact, I think that question is so distracting that we risk missing the rest of the story. It's especially strange because this is the only story we have from Jesus' childhood. Only Luke has anything about the early years, and this is it. We get one childhood memory between his birth and the start of his ministry, and this is it. Remember that time we left Jesus in the temple and didn't even notice. Two things to point out here. First, Mary and Joseph are traveling with a large group of people. It's not like they're climbing into their hatchback with one empty seat in the back and not noticing. As the text says, they assumed he was within the group of travelers among the relatives and friends. I'm only dwelling on this to try to get us past what is probably a glaring obstacle in our modern minds. And Mary's reaction on finally seeing her boy sets the right tone. 
She has been worried sick about him, searching in great anxiety. Great anxiety is something we can all relate to these days, right? Every morning I wake up vaguely worried that everything is about to get much worse. We have all been living in great anxiety for almost a year now. And the second thing going on here has to do with the Gospel of Luke. When you read Luke's Gospel, you'll notice that everything points to the temple. Jesus is always heading for the temple. The temple is the scene of all the big confrontations. For Luke, Jesus' destiny is always the temple. It's the most natural place for him to go, sort of his default destination. If you are looking for Jesus in Luke's Gospel, you should probably start in the temple, which is also something we can relate to. We all want nothing more than to gather together in our beautiful church building and worship God together, to pray together, to sit in God's house together, like we are used to doing. Mary asks, why have you treated us like this? She's not ready for this kind of change. And so she makes it a story about Mary. But really, who wouldn't? At this point, she doesn't really know the full truth about Jesus. And I'm willing to, willing to consider that Jesus doesn't know the full truth about Jesus. To Jesus, it seems only natural that he would be in the temple. When I was 12 years old, it seemed only natural that I would be at the candy store. <laughs> Jesus responds to his mother, and it's worth noting, this is the first time Jesus ever speaks. He asks, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? It's almost as if Jesus hasn't noticed the change of focus either. Then Luke adds, but they did not understand what he said to them. Well, of course they didn't. They don't know that when Jesus says, my father's house, he's not talking about Joseph's place. To Jesus and Luke, it's only natural for Jesus to be in the temple. So Jesus disappeared, his parents found him, he seems surprised that it took them so long. And then the gospel reading closes with this. And Jesus increased in wisdom and years and in divine and human favor. That seems like an odd phrase, doesn't it? It kind of sounds to me like, and Jesus, Mary, and Joseph lived happily ever after. And Jesus increased in wisdom and years and in divine and human favor. It also, Sounds like it's the beginning of a story, rather than the end of one. Maybe even like the end of an introduction to a story. Just before that, we see Mary doing what Mary does in Luke's Gospel, pondering these things in her heart. Well, our translation today uses treasure these things, but the actual word is closer to keeps these things. Mary treasures these things in her heart because she does not understand. And she also ponders them, turns them over to try to understand. Pondering is a good word for this, since it implies an activity, an action on her part. These are not precious little memories of Jesus' childhood to store away in a scrapbook and bring out to show friends at parties. She ponders, trying to understand. Mary ponders these changes in the boy Jesus, just as we ponder these changes that we are going through. We want our great anxiety to end. We want to gather safely in this temple to worship God. We want the baby that we just had 10 days ago, safely tucked in his crib, no crying he makes in the silent holy night, a baby we know how to handle. 
change the diapers, feed the stomach, wrap the baby in warm clothes. Babies we understand. I think that's one of the reasons Christmas is so comfortable for us and for everyone, really. We embrace the little eight pound, six ounce newborn baby Jesus, don't even know a word yet, infant cuddly but still omnipotent. <laughs> that's how we like Jesus to be. We don't want him to change into an adult. And it's tempting to think that the Christmas story is the biggest part of the life of Jesus. But honestly, it's not. It's just a way to start the story. And the fact that we moved from his birth only 10 days ago to his first words in the temple at the age of 12 today kind of drives home the point. Christmas is important because it is the start of our redemption story. And for that reason, on some level, the whole Christmas story is like the phrase, once upon a time. It starts the story, but it sure isn't the point. It's a big deal that God walks among us, don't get me wrong, but the point of the story is yet to come. Things have changed quickly in the past 10 days. Jesus is out of the crib and taking on the world. Suddenly he's 12 years old and giving us clues as to where this story is going. And like Mary, we're already confused. We're already wishing he'd just stay put, surrounded by animals and shepherds and wise men. Stay right there and don't ever change, little Christmas Jesus. But that Christmas Jesus has moved on. The crib is empty. And now we follow him on this journey that takes him to the cross and leads us to the empty tomb. It's one long, wondrous story that begins with his birth and takes us to our rebirth, from the empty crib to the empty tomb. A lot is going to change for us in the next few months. Like Mary and Joseph, we are living in great anxiety. Like the child Jesus, we naturally want to be in God's house. But for now, this is how things have to be because we care about other people and their health. We don't know how long we will have to wait before we can gather around this altar, but we know Jesus will be waiting for us when we do. But here's the thing. Jesus is not confined to this manger scene, and Jesus is not confined to this building. As we heard, Jesus is out in the world now, too, busy doing the work that the Father sent him to do, bringing restoration to the world and restoration to our relationships. Jesus has come, and now God walks among us. And you and I will continue to ponder all these things in our hearts knowing that one day we will gather together again. May God continue to remind us that Jesus is out in the world with us, among us, wherever we may be. Amen. Turning to page 358, page 358, we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 6, which can be found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. Form 6, page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for, for our, our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are alone. alone, for this community, for the nation, and the world, for, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, for those who minister, minister to the, the sick, sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all, all who proclaim the gospel and, and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, for our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially praying for David Wigginton, Ann Smith, Bob Meyer, Chris Lane, Judy Wigginton, Priya Curian, Chuck Tilly, Michael Flam, Bob Long, Chester Brumbaugh, Stormy, Dave Cottrell, Jeff Frank, Sherry, Margaret Fowler, Isaac Leggett, Bobby Mulbach, Aaron Wiley, Charlene Lachlan, Dan, Sarah, Brian Dorish, Charles Connor, Alan Bauman, Marlene, and all those affected by COVID-19. Hear us, Lord, for, for your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. People of St. Timothy's Church. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever, forever and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died, that they might have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for the repose of the soul of Pete Keplinger. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put, who put their, their trust, trust in, in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In, in your, your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins. sins. Known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ.
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my wife. We've covered all the announcements except to remind you that we are using Andrew Bolden's Third Street Mass and Eucharistic Prayer B. Prayer B can be found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. Also, we will use the prayer for spiritual communion following the invitation. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father,
Let's pray together a prayer for spiritual communion. We offer our praise and thanksgiving, O Lord, in union with your faithful people at every altar where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Turning to page 366, page 366, let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. For the blessing, I remind you, all of these poinsettias need a home. Look at their sad eyes. <laughs> they really want someone to love them. So come this week and pick them up. Now receive the blessing. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As our closing hymn, we sing together hymn number 94. Hymn number 94. <laughs>
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't forget your poinsettias.